money, fame, mansions, supercars, whatever it is you could ever desire, he had it. His name is Ramon Abbas, but to the masses, he was the Hush Puppy. Ramon Hush Puppy was an influencer with over 2.5 million followers on Instagram. He was living a life that most people can only dream of. His world was filled with exclusive parties, designer brands, and a lavish lifestyle that caught the eyes of millions. But in 2020, everything changed when a SWAT team broke down his door. So who is Ramon Abbas? And how did he, a kid from the slums of Lagos, become a self-made billionaire? And what was the mistake that cost him his freedom? But before we continue, make sure to subscribe to stay tuned for upcoming videos. Ramona Boss, known to the world as Hush Puppy, wasn't always the icon of extravagance. Born in Lagos, Nigeria, he grew up in a world far removed from the opulence he would later display. His father, a taxi driver, and his mother, a street vendor, struggled to make ends meet. Yet, amidst this hardship, a young Abbas harbored dreams of affluence and luxury. He started small, selling designer clothes from his car, but his ambitions were anything but modest. As cyber cafes sprouted across Nigeria, Hush Puppy found a new world of opportunities. He delved into the realms of online crime, mastering the art of email scams and quickly becoming a prominent figure among the Yahoo Boys. These Yahoo Boys, as they were called, mastered the art of digital deception, from check cashing to romance scams, preying on unsuspecting victims. His success in these early scams laid the foundation for his future empire, but made him a mark for Nigerian law enforcement as Nigeria's crackdown on cybercrime intensified. Seeking greener pastures, Abbas moved to Malaysia, a haven for internet fraudsters, before eventually settling in Dubai. It was there that Hush Puppy was born, a persona that would become synonymous with unbridled opulence, a self-proclaimed billionaire Gucci master. On Instagram, Hush Puppy spun a tale of a self-made billionaire, his posts were a dizzying display of wealth. Custom cars, designer outfits, and international trips. Brands courted him, and his influence grew exponentially. But beneath the veneer of success lay a murky world of crime. Hush Puppy had mastered the art of business email compromise themes, BECS, targeting not just individuals, but multi-million dollar companies. He was a kingpin in a hidden realm where huge sums of money changed hands through deceit and manipulation. The business email compromise scam, a sophisticated online fraud, starts with infiltrating a corporate email system. Scammers employ various tactics, like phishing or exploiting weak security protocols to gain unauthorized access to company email accounts. Once inside, they play the waiting game, meticulously observing email traffic until a significant financial transaction is initiated. When a large invoice is issued, the scammer seizes the opportunity. They either intercept and alter the invoice, substituting the bank details with their own, or they impersonate the sender by creating a nearly identical email address. In some cases, they communicate directly with the recipient, feigning a legitimate reason for changing the previously provided bank account details. The deception doesn't end there. To lend credibility to their fraudulent activities, these scammers often set up elaborate facades, including counterfeit websites, bogus businesses, and even fake customer service hotlines. These elements are meticulously crafted to pass off as legitimate, successfully duping people conducting due diligence or security checks. Once the unwary victim transfers money to the altered account, the scammers act quickly. The funds are immediately dispersed across various mule accounts, converted into cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, or used to purchase tangible assets such as jewelry or gold. This rapid movement and diversification of the stolen funds serve a dual purpose. It effectively launders the money, making it harder to trace, and it also hinders the victim's ability to reclaim their lost funds, often leading them with little to no recourse. As Hush Puppy flaunted his newfound wealth, he gained a massive following on social media, 
reaching up to 2.8 million followers at its height. As you can imagine, his social media content featured luxury cars, private jet escapades, and extravagant luxury brands shopping sprees. Back in his homeland, he was more than just an influencer, he was an icon. His fame not only brought him admiration, but also luxurious perks, like being showered with high-end brand gifts from designer clothes to VIP trips to Paris. Fendi, recognizing his influence, extended exclusive dining invitations among the creme de la creme of society. In one notable event, the Versace store in Kuala Lumpur honored Hush Puppy and fellow Instagram star Samson Oyokunla for their loyalty with lavish gifts, a gesture that Hush Puppy proudly broadcasted to his followers, celebrating with a lavish $20,000 shopping spree. His circle expanded to include other influencers like Ismaila Mustafa, better known as Mamfa. Together, they flaunted their opulent lifestyle and high-end fashion, even catching the attention of the music world as they were referenced in the song Living Things by Nice. However, Hush Puppy's path as an influencer wasn't without controversy. He found himself embroiled in various online disputes, some of which appeared orchestrated for publicity. However, not every confrontation Hush Puppy faced was trivial or without serious implications. His lavish lifestyle and bold accusations against others often brought him dangerously close to being unmasked. A notable incident occurred when he called out rapper Fino for allegedly sporting counterfeit watches. This accusation triggered a response from singer Tay C, who publicly questioned Hush Puppy's credibility and the source of his wealth. KC's post was direct and challenging. You have no credibility, no known source of income, and yet you come on social media to attack hard-working Nigerian musicians with traceable wealth. What do you do for a living? What is your talent? How did you make your money? What brand do you represent? Nigeria's Economic and Financial Crimes Commission needs to start paying more attention to detail. This public scrutiny highlighted a glaring inconsistency in Hush Puppy's narrative. While he was open about sharing his opulent lifestyle with his followers, details about the source of his wealth remained elusive. Whenever probed about how he acquired his fortune, Hush Puppy would ambiguously attribute it to real estate investments, a claim that many found hard to believe given the lack of evidence or a clear business track record. His evasive answers only fueled more speculation and doubt about the legitimacy of his wealth. As Hush Puppy's illicit activities expanded, his criminal network grew, bringing in associates like Galeb Alamari and Juma, who played pivotal roles in orchestrating complex, large-scale scams. One of their most audacious attempts was the planned heist targeting the Bank of Valletta in Malta, aiming to embezzle a staggering 13 million euros. This operation highlighted the sophisticated and intricate nature of their schemes, which included hacking into email systems, creating counterfeit websites, and utilizing a network of money mules to effectively launder the stolen funds. Galib Alamari, a Tanada-based money launderer, emerged as a key figure in Hush Puppy's criminal empire. His role was crucial in ensuring the smooth transfer of illicit funds into a boss's accounts. Alau Mari's expertise and connections were instrumental in some of Hush Puppy's most significant financial heists. Together, they harnessed the power of technology, primarily through encrypted communication platforms like Snapchat under Avis Hush Puppy 5 account to coordinate their illegal operations and manage the intricate details of their schemes. Their attempt to defraud the Bank of Valletta showcased the extent of their criminal prowess. They not only planned to intercept a massive sum, but also to redistribute it swiftly and covertly. This heist exemplified the depth of their criminal network and their ability to execute complex financial frauds on an international scale, solidifying Hush Puppy's reputation as one of the most formidable BEC scammers of his time. In another particularly bold scam, Hush Puppy, alongside the Kenyan entrepreneur named Juma, 
targeted a Qatari individual seeking a substantial loan to establish a new school in Qatar. The businessman, in need of $15 million, consulted a financial advisor who, in turn, inadvertently led him to Juma's fraudulent website. Harsh Puppy and Juma, operating under false identities, engaged in a protracted ruse, convincing the businessman of their ability to facilitate the loan, albeit for hefty fees amounting to six figures. As the scheme progressed, every time the loan seemed on the verge of materialization, Hush Puppy and Juma would cunningly demand additional payments, supposedly to unlock the final release of the funds. In a sophisticated twist to their deception, they employed Vincent Chibuzu to create a counterfeit Wells Fargo website and an accompanying automated hotline. When the businessman called the member to verify the status of his loan, he was falsely informed that the $15 million had been deposited into his account. The elation of the businessman was short-lived. Hush Puppy then demanded a $575,000 withholding tax to facilitate the transfer of funds from the U.S., further ensnaring the victim in their web of lies. As the scam unraveled, Shibuzu, feeling short-changed in the deal, approached the businessman and revealed the fraud. Enraged by this betrayal, Hush Puppy reached out to Abakiari, a high-ranking and well-respected deputy police commissioner in Nigeria, known for his competence and perceived incorruptibility. Contrary to his public image, Hiari shockingly agreed to assist Hush Puppy in meeting out retribution against Chibuzu. Hush Puppy's request for a violent reprimand and potentially a prolonged jail sentence for Chibuzu was met with Kiari's disturbing willingness to cooperate, for which he provided bank details for the payments. This interaction, far from being the miscommunication, revealed a darker side to Kiari, betraying the trust placed in him as a law enforcement official and exposing a corrupt alliance with one of the most notorious fraudsters of the time. The unraveling began with a bold heist involving the New York law firm. Hush Puppy and his accomplices duped the firm out of $922,000, a crime that drew the focused attention of the FBI. This successful scam marked the beginning of the end for Hush Puppy. As the FBI delved deeper, they discovered his real identity through a seemingly innocuous Instagram post celebrating his birthday which led them to his visa application and subsequently to a detailed understanding of his financial maneuvers. Hush Puppy's overconfidence was his undoing. Even as the FBI gathered evidence against him, Hush Puppy failed to recognize the severity of his situation. He continued to showcase his luxurious life on social media, changing his Instagram bio in a feeble attempt at misdirection. Meanwhile, the FBI, in coordination with UAE authorities, mounted surveillance operations near his residence. The arrest was as dramatic as Hush Puppy's lifestyle. On June 8th, 2020, while he was asleep, his apartment was stormed by Dubai authorities. The scale of his criminal enterprise became glaringly evident with the seizure of numerous felons, laptops, luxury cars, a substantial amount of cash, and the contact details of two million potential victims. Hush Puppy's arrest sent shockwaves through social media, particularly among his 2.8 million followers who had been captivated by his extravagant displays of wealth. The reality was far grimmer than the glamorous life he portrayed. The man who once posed with luxury brands and expensive cars was now facing a long sentence in federal prison, a stark reminder of the fine line between social media fame and the consequences of criminal actions. The arrest was a moment of reckoning in the world of cybercrime. As he landed in the United States on July 3, 2020, the charges against him were standering. He was accused of conspiring to launder an astronomical sum of money, literally hundreds of millions of dollars. The affidavit presented a detailed account of Avis's involvement in laundering funds intended for theft through sophisticated and fraudulent wire transfers. Ramon's trial in Chicago was a sobering moment. Pleading guilty to his crimes of fraud, which amounts to more than $24 million, he was sentenced to over a decade in prison. The billionaire Gucci master's story ended not with a celebration of luxury, but in the courtroom, 
facing the consequences of his actions. Hush Puppy's Saga is a modern-day cautionary tale about the perils of greed and deception. It serves as a stark reminder of the fine line between reality and illusion in our digital world. His story warns us about the consequences of living a life built on lies. This has been a journey into the heart of a digital enigma. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more stories that explore the complex tapestry of human nature and the digital world we inhabit.